Hi, my name is Dana and today I'm going to be going over the basics of tie-dye with you. If you didn't know, tie-dye is a really popular trend this spring. So I thought, you know, I would show you just how you can approach tie-dyeing with some old sheets that I have on hand. So you don't always have to use um, a new shirt. You could, you could tie-dye several objects and I'm going to show you the basics, the different strategies, how to do that. So one of the biggest mistakes I see when it comes to tie-dye is that people actually just disregard the first step, which is the tying process. I want to emphasize that the more time you spend in tying your project, the, the better that it will turn out. And there are also different application methods that will affect your project. So keep in mind the colors that you're going to be using and where you're going to be placing them on the project. And I promise you that it, you, you know, you'll have a better turnout overall. So I'm going to go over some of the different um, application methods here so you can see. So these are two hoodies that are done in the same six color swirl pattern. However, you could probably see you know the differences here. Um, they will look different if you apply the colors differently. So that's kind of cool. That no project to turn out you know exactly the same. This is actually a two color swirl. And this is one that I have just tie dyed in stripes. So hopefully you can see you know differences in application does matter. So if you're planning on tie-dyeing some stuff, the first thing I recommend is that you put on some dark clothing or some clothing that you're not worried about ruining because it's most likely that you probably will get dye on, you know, your clothing or like your arms. I definitely recommend that you have some gloves or you purchase a kit that, you know, has basically everything that you're going to need. This will normally come with like a tablecloth, some rubber bands, and again, some gloves so you don't stain your hands for like a week. Um, I personally really love these tulip kits. This is the first one that I bought. I don't actually recommend this one because the bottles are so extremely small. Um, this is a one-step kit, however, so you don't need to soak your garments in soda ash beforehand. Um, this is, is going to take care of everything that you need. All you need is everything, you know, in this little kit here and some dark clothing and whatever project, you know, you're planning on dyeing. Um, what I do recommend actually is this new one that I purchased. You can actually see size comparison. These bottles are much larger, probably at least four or five times bigger than these small ones. Again, it does come with the tablecloth and some gloves, rubber bands, and this one actually has some extra dye. Keep in mind that if you are using the dye refills, you need to be wearing a mask when you refill these bottles. This dye is um, very lightweight and it will float in the air. You do not want to breathe this in. It could be very dangerous. So now that we've covered the basics, let's just jump right in. Um, today we're going to be using the wet method. There is two methods when it comes to tie dyeing the wet and the dry method. I personally never use the dry so again we're we'll using the wet method. The wet method is obviously you need to start out with your project wet so we're going to wash this. Um, it's really important whenever you have something brand new that you wash it so you can remove any chemicals that a factory might have used for sizing a garment or um, you definitely want to wash anything that you know you've even owned for a while so you can remove any soap or any uh, fabric softener that might be in your garment. So let's go ahead and throw these in the wash and I will continue talking to you about uh, some other important things you should keep in mind for tie-dye. So while those are washing, we can go ahead and start mixing our dye. Let's pick out um, some colors to use that are going to uh, coordinate with each other. You don't want to pick, I don't know, like an orange and a purple. Those two colors are not going to mix very well. Uh, pick like a, a turquoise and a blue. So the, the nice, you know, you'll get like nice gradient between those colors instead of like a brown color. I feel like that's where a lot of people really go wrong whenever they tie dye is they just pick colors that do not go together and your project is not going to look as beautiful. The colors just aren't going to blend as nicely as they should. So let's pick out some colors that are going to coordinate nicely with each other and then we are going to tie our projects once they come out of the washing machine and I'll show you guys how we can start applying this dye. Now I'm going to show you some of the different designs that you can make. First, I'm starting out with the spiral here. I basically just grab it either in the center of the project or on the side and twist. Um, I apply two rubber bands to create four sections. I cross, you know, those rubber bands and that way you'll know exactly where to apply your dye. You could even do a double spiral if you wanted to twist one side and then twist, you know, the other side a different direction. That's a pretty cool um, result as well. This bunched up pattern is really cool because it's going to create stripes. However, because it's bunched up, it's going to leave some white areas in between so they won't be solid. It's going to have a really cool effect. I really like this pattern, so I'm excited to show you guys how this one turns out. For the next one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it flat and try to find the center, and then I'm going to pull directly up once I find that center, and we're going to start banding it off. 
Now, if you create the first band kind of um, with a, a larger width, you'll have a really big circle. And then I'm gonna do like a smaller width band right after it, so it has like a ring following it. So what you're gonna turn out with is a circle in the center and a bunch of colored rings. So now I've started with that last sheet that we just folded up, um, the one that I pulled straight up. I'm currently using a purple and a turquoise, and I'm just gonna be rotating those colors on these different intervals. So I'm taking care to make sure that my purple and my turquoise don't get too mixed together. Although these colors will look great, you know, mixed, I definitely don't wanna muddle my colors too much. I'm taking care, you can see I've got a little paper towel on the side so that I can clean up all my messes. Um, I also have plastic laid out on the floor and you can see here that I flipped the object so that way I'm not pouring an excessive amount of dye. I'm just really taking care to um, do a decent dye job on this project. So if you've noticed that you've got some really deep folds, you might wanna try to really saturate that area or try to get the dye down in there a little bit because you don't want to have giant white patches. Having some white in the final outcome will be awesome, but we definitely don't want it to be patchy all over because we didn't fully saturate areas that need to be saturated. Once you feel pretty confident that you've done a decent job, you can go ahead and wrap your project up in some plastic and set it aside. With the fitted sheet, I apply the dye in a similar fashion, just rotating the colors, making sure that, you know the colors don't get too muddled, and uh, again, getting between those folds. And finally, the pillowcases. So I actually did his and her pillowcases because I found some old dye that I mixed up like two weeks ago. I thought it would be cool to test the potency of the dye, and yes, it still worked. Um, it did, however, give me a little bit of a pastel effect, and I'm not sure because if it's old or if it's because I might have watered this dye down previously. I did test that also. Um, I used half the dye and then filled the bottle up with water the rest of the way and then mixed that up, and that seemed to work just fine. You can actually tell a little bit of a difference, but I actually prefer the dyes a little watered down. I like that pastel effect. So if you're actually dyeing a lot of things, what I do is I wrap every project in two or three bags, and then I actually put them inside of a box that's lined with a bag, and I just kind of roll the whole thing up, and I let it sit for 24 hours. So once your dye has set for a minimum of eight hours, you can go ahead and wash your project out. However, I personally recommend that you leave the dye to set for about 24 hours. I've had really good results doing this. So that's why I recommend, you know, letting your dye sit for about 24 hours before you wash them out. Whenever you go to wash your project out, start with cold water. You're going to want to do this very slowly and wash out your colors individually. I know it might be a pain in the butt, but it's totally going to be worth it. If you wash out the whole project, your colors might get muddled and it just won't turn out as good as you want it to be. So after you've washed out all the colors with cold water, then you're going to repeat with hot water. And you're going to want to um, wash until the, the water runs clean. And then you can go ahead and throw your project in the washing machine with some soap and get a really good wash on them. And then you're all done. So I'll show you guys what this sheet looks like whenever I'm done washing it out. So the end result is just freaking amazing. I did his and her pillows, but this flat sheet right here is the one that I um, tried to find the center of and just pull straight up. I thought it was going to create more of a circular design, but somehow I managed to do a square. I'm not disappointed. I think it looks really cool. If we pull this flat sheet back, I want to show you this other sheet. This is the one that I crumpled. This thing turned out amazing. 
This is the one that I crumpled to create the line. See how it didn't, uh, didn't dye everything. I like this pattern. It looks really awesome. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up so I know that you guys want to see future tie-dye content from me. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do that because it definitely helps the channel grow. You can hit the little bell for notifications and you won't miss any of my videos. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Bye!